So your next gentleman, he wants you to come in wearing nothing but high heels. From the women that say they choose to work there. They want you to be their boss or their secretary. Hey, I know I've got to let you go. You've got client number seven, I think, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. Go All right. right. To the ex-cop that runs it. We run a tight ship. We don't allow drugs. No underage girls. We check everyone's passport. This is life on the inside of one of Britain's brothels. Everybody seems to like to shower. That's why we go through so many towels. We've reported on prostitution or sex work numerous times. We've talked about women who are trafficked into the country and then exploited. We've talked about the grooming of young girls who are then pimped out. There is another side of it. There are some women who say they choose to work as prostitutes and Louise is one of those. Tell us why. Well, originally I fell into this work a few years ago. Um, I needed money fast and I made it fast. Um, I went on to do a few normal jobs, office work, I went to uni um, and then I made the decision to go back into this kind of work um, and it's so I can provide for myself in the future. Some people will not believe you. They will not okay. believe you've made a positive choice to sell your body for sex in order to make money. Convince them. I understand that. I understand that completely. I think there's a negative, a really negative stereotype um, within society that makes people think that women are doing this to fund a drug habit or because they're so desperate they have no other options um, or because they've been trafficked, forced, coerced into this kind of work. Um, they can't seem to wrap their heads around the fact that I want to do this job, that it's my choice, that I enjoy this kind of work um, and that I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't want to. You choose, you say, to work from brothels. I would always rather work in an environment that I can guarantee is clean and safe. Sometimes on out calls, you'd go to people's houses, you're in their environment, it might not be the cleanest place, it might not be the safest place because you don't know who's in there. Um, I could never fully relax because you've always got one eye on the escape route. Um, it might be dirty, they might have been up for days, they might have been partying, they might be drunk, anything could happen. I didn't feel 100% safe. As the maid or receptionist, just talk us through the schedule for today. Okay, uh, well essentially every day we have three ladies working um, and we usually have two bedrooms, um, basically. Um, so two of the girls will be working at a time, one of the ladies will be waiting until after one of the other ladies is finished to use the room. And what we do, we do half an hour slots, 45 minute slots or an hour slots, all at different costs. And just so we know who's coming in, what time, etc. And so there's a there's some organisation about it all. We don't like clients to bump into each other at all. A client can have a shower himself and leave. The next client can come in and also a girl herself can have a freshen up and a shower. Everybody seems to like to shower. That's why we go through so many towels a day. Um, you've worked in this industry for a long time. How would you say it's changed? But what I've noticed nowadays is a lot of younger gentlemen coming in, um, handsome gentlemen, people that you wouldn't think would need to pay for sex. But there, it's easier for them than dating, meeting a girl. Some friends will actually come together before a night out and I don't, it's, it, it's, it's become a lot more normalised. Could we get a side shot if possible please? Mm -hmm. See that little touch out? Oh there we go, that's absolutely gorgeous, thank you so much. Okay. Tell me why, why you're taking these pics. Basically, these are daily pictures that we put on our Twitter account, so they're, they're not website, they're not airbrushed or anything like that, they're real life pictures. We would blur faces out, tattoos or any identifying marks or something like that, but it's basically so we can have a fresh picture of the girls daily on what girls were doing that day. Right, so anyone going on that Twitter, on your Twitter account would know who's available that day, Yes, yes, basically. Yeah. Could we have another one from the back, please, my darling? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Victoria. That's all right. Are you comfortable doing this? Very much. Yeah? This is my favourite pose, I think. Is it? Yeah, I like Why? this one. I don't know. I, just She's had a, I think I look bigger than this You've got a very peachy bottom, my darling. There you go. A very peachy bottom, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on the website um, with some pictures of you in various poses. And on the website, it talks about your age and your stats and dress size and so on yeah. 
and your nationality and then it talks about the services that you offer mm -hmm. uh, gfe what's that it's a girlfriend experience what does that mean so it's perhaps a bit more um oh, the doorbell going again that must be another client yeah, that's yeah. Another one. um Girlfriend experience, lots of kissing, lots of touching, exactly what it says on the tin, you know? It's a bit more loving, if I can use that word. Yeah. Toys, role play, kissing, mm -hmm. OW. That's oral with, so oral with condoms, um, which is the only one that I do, so that's, yeah, oral with. Right. Oh, the, do, do some men want oral without? Yes, yeah, and I've lost business because I only do oral with, um, but that's my baseline, mm. um, so OWO would be the oral without a condom. So your next gentleman, he wants you to come in wearing nothing but high heels. That last guy just had a role play with me and he wanted me to dump him. Like, he lost a brain and I'm supposed to interrogate him. I'm just like, uh, do 10 jumping jacks or do push-ups or something. <laughs> What are some of the more unusual requests that you've had? Um, you'll get people that have fetishes um, and that have very niche um, ideas about what they like. Um, I tend to get the foot fetish men, men that like to have sex with your shoes or various objects. I mean, there's quite a common one of having sex with your best friend's girlfriend or they want you to be their boss or their secretary or someone in their lives that they fancy but that they can't have sex with. Presumably there's a bit of black humour about some of the requ requests. Oh yeah, those <laughs> of enough. course, of course. There's a lot of giggles. Louise will see eight or nine clients on a busy day. They're charged £70 per half hour. Louise takes home 45 of that. The rest goes to the brothel. You are here and we can see your face yeah. and we can hear your voice. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are you comfortable with that? I'm sort of publicly outing myself today. If I came on here and I was trying to dispel a stigma and help people see that there is a different side to the industry um, which contradicts their existing beliefs um, and I didn't show my face, I would feel as though I wasn't setting an example. What I'm trying to present is a side of the industry that people might not even know exists, that people might have such a set in stone thought process about that they think automatically, automatically that all girls that do this um, are on drugs or have been trafficked. And that is not the case for me and for many, many other women. It actually appears that we're fully booked at the moment. If you could give us a call in the next hour or so, maybe we can have a cancellation for you or something. Doorbell's just gone again, another client is here. This is pretty much a, a conventional small two-bedroom flat, small front room, smallish kitchen, all the kind of paraphernalia you would find in a normal kitchen. Washing machine, sweeping brush, sink, etc, etc. But in the cupboards, no tins of baked beans or cereals, but the kind of paraphernalia that you need in a brothel. Um, mouthwash, condom, deodorant, lots of hand wash, air freshener, and then next to that, dozens of packets of baby wipes for the women who work here to clean themselves after they've seen a client, for the clients to clean themselves as well, tissues, and then nappy sacks. Not for nappies, but for used condoms. The owner of the brothel, a father of one, insists he does all he can to make sure the women who work for him aren't being forced to do it by someone else. They'll be spoken to by a receptionist or there's, there's on-site managers. If they've got any doubts, we'll either say, look, we're, we're not comfortable with this, I mean, and we'll send them home. If it's, if it's something extreme, then we will call the police. There's no 100% there's no guarantee. There might be a girl working for us now who's been with us for years and seems happy and bubbly, and she might go home and give every single pin, penny to her boyfriend. How do you know the age of the women who work in your brothels? We always ask for passports, and if we're not happy with passports or ID cards, even if the date of birth is correct, if we're not happy with a card, we, we, again, we'll just, we'll just turn them away. Do the police turn a blind eye? I would say we've got a good uh, working relationship with the police. We run a tight ship, we don't allow drugs, we don't uh, know underage girls, we check everyone's passports. If we've got any doubts at all that they're 
not there on their own free will. We will call the police. We've done that several times where we've actually rang the police, say, we've got these girls here. We're not happy with their story. We think that they might be here under duress. How often has that happened? With Twice in 15, yeah, 15 years. As part of the conditions for us being able to film here, we weren't allowed to talk to any clients. Over the course of our time at the brothel, we spoke to 11 women who work there and all said they were working out of their own free choice. Are there women that you work with who you think they are being coerced? No, absolutely not. Are, no, there, women, are there women who are doing this kind of work in order to help pay for drugs or alcohol? In the place where I work, no. I have never witnessed people that I, to my knowledge, working to fund a drug habit, it wouldn't be allowed. People don't want to go and see girls that are drugged off their faces that, or that are alcoholics. That does happen, but you're saying it doesn't happen in this particular brothel? No, absolutely not. I've never seen that. Are there girls who are under the age of consent here? No, I have never seen that in this, in this environment, never. You've been working all day, you've just come back in and I saw that you rolled your eyes yeah. uh, as you were coming in, clutching your underwear. Why? The client was a bit boring. <laughs> he Not probably weird. was a bit shy and he doesn't know what to talk and what to do with me. And what did he talk about? There's the bell again. What did he talk about? <laughs> he was talking about his nails. <laughs> Uh, okay, I know I've got to let you go. You've got client number seven, I think, haven't you? Yeah, I'll go by now. I'll let you go. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Cheers. After you. Okay, okay so, so you know what you're doing. Through here. Yeah. This is where everything takes place and the service takes place. Okay. It's pretty bog standard. It's yeah. fairly basic. Yeah. Um. So yeah. How do you get your head around? having sex or having to do various different things with a man you've never met before who is paying for that? All I need to know is that he's there mm. because he knows I'm providing a service to him. Mm. It's sex that's transactional in nature mm. and that's my job, that's my type of work. Mm. This isn't personal sex, this isn't sex with my boyfriend or my husband or, you know, this mm. is work. Why would you choose to be a prostitute? That's what people don't understand. Why would you choose that? I chose to do it because I want money and I want to earn a good wage and I don't want to have a regular normal job where I earn minimum wage. I think it's difficult for women to make money um, at a young age. I, I do it because I make good money and I'm saving up for myself. I want a future for myself. I don't want to have to rely on anyone else. Um, I want to be financially secure and independent. Do you always enjoy yourself? Sometimes I will enjoy myself more than at other times. I think that's true of any job. Mm. You know, you will like some clients more than others, regardless of the type of work you're doing. Mm. Okay, whether I was having sex with someone or doing their books or interior designing their house, I may prefer some clients to others. Mm. That's not to say that I have a bad time with clients because if I ever feel that I'm being disrespected, which hasn't happened... No, it's I never know, happened to you. You've never felt disrespected. Not on an in-call job. Mm. I've always worked in a house where there are other people present um, and if they thought there was anything wrong with the clients, they wouldn't let them in. If I thought there was anything wrong with a client when I came into the room with him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that service. If he gave me any sort of attitude, if he said something I didn't like, if he made any comments about me that I felt were negative mm. or insulting, I don't have to see that man. It's not necessarily the woman's call, is it? They might not have the confidence to say, I'm not doing this, please leave. Maybe not. All that we can say to them, and I can say to them, is you have the option, you have that choice mm. of whether to see that client or not. Mm. I would hope, as in my case, that that's an, enough to give them the confidence that they need mm. to say no. Brothels are illegal in England and Wales, as you know. <laughs> uh, it is not illegal to sell sex or buy sex in a brothel unless you're involved in operating it. What do you think about that? I would personally love to see brothels decriminalised, regulated, even legalised and licensed. 
my problem with the law that states that women can't work in brothels in groups of two or more is that I can't do my job within the confines of the law. It's almost as if the government have said, okay, you can sell sex, you can sell yourself, but we are going to make it as dangerous and as difficult for you to do that as possible in the hope that it will stop you doing it. What would you say to feminists then who say... That I'm being exploited? Yeah. I, I find that really uh, such a form of patronising condescension. It's that kind of attitude that makes, that motivates me to sit and talk to you and try and dispel these myths that I am this idiot who is being exploited and forced and coerced. I would say to these women, I would say to these feminists, how dare you talk to me like that? How dare you tell me what I can and can't do and what my rights are as a woman and call yourself a feminist? Mm -hmm.